A new film goes inside Colorado's oldest prison, the Territorial Correctional Facility in Canyon City. The film These Walls premieres Monday at the Sea Film Center, and it is already sold out. So the film was devised, written, and performed by artists incarcerated at the prison last year when Colorado Territorial marked its 150th year. And joining us today are the film's creators and producers from the DU Prison Arts Initiative and the Colorado Department of Corrections. So we first want to start with uh, Professor Ashley Hamilton from DU and uh, tell us about how did the idea for the retrospective on the prison come about? Yeah, thank you. So the Colorado Department of Corrections and in particular the management team and warden at Territorial reached out to us in early 2021 and said it's our 150th year and we're interested in having a nuanced and complex conversation about our 150 years and doing that in an artistic way. Uh, we've had the gift of collaborating pretty deeply at this point with the CDOC on a lot of different artistic projects. And so we were lucky to work with Warden Cayley and his team and then eventually a group of incredibly talented incarcerated folks to begin to build this project, these walls. So when we started in early 2021, we had no idea what the project would end up being. And Dr. Hammore, Eric, and his team and their team in Territorial did an incredible job. Absolutely, uh, looks very powerful. And we wanna go to Director Williams uh, from the Department of Corrections. How do initiatives such as this film make a difference for the inmates, the correctional staff, and ultimately just for the overall community? Well, uh, thanks, first of all, thanks for having us <clears throat> and discussing this. I, you know, this is one more step in the road that we have been on to humanize, normalize the prison environment, make it more purpose driven, not only for the people who are living there and incarcerated there, but also especially for the staff who work there. So this is one more step, one more um, artistic step, but it's not really, it's really more than that. It's about a film, as we say, it's about a theater show, it's about all the other things we're doing, but it's really about changing the dynamic and changing the prison culture. And so this is one more way that we make prison a more humane and purpose-driven place. And that's important because one, 90, 95% of the people in prison are getting out. And who do you want to be your neighbor? And two, uh, nothing good comes from making prison more punitive than it already is. And so these are ways to humanize and really give purpose and meaning. And so I'm more excited about this uh, venture because it's just one more on the road. Absolutely, so important. Uh, I know before we were talking, you said just how important this program is. Um, we wanna talk to Mr. Davis. So you were incarcerated at the Territorial yourself for a total of 34 years. You've since been released. And I'm really curious to know how taking on the role of assistant director changed you. And can you describe the impact you saw for others who are at the prison who also acted in the film? Well, thank you for having me. Um, yes, I did spend 34 years in prison, but not all of it was at Territorial. Uh, Really, the, the impact it had on me was being able to watch men who at times feel like they have zero control or zero input in their own lives, create something basically from the ground up with support of DOC and the Department of Corrections. The warden was amazing. The, the staff there, Captain Wendy Rosen, was amazing. Um, and what happened is they created a program that was theirs and um, at the first viewing, which was really exclusively for them, um, it was one of the most impactful things I'd ever been at because they saw their thing and they saw something that they made while they were incarcerated. And having those opportunities, Director Williams is giving men and women inside more avenues to explore having opportunities to build and rebuild their lives. And that is probably the most impactful part for me is watching as individuals who have struggled for whatever reason and made really poor decisions, feel like they can take control of their lives and create something good and meaningful and, and forever lasting in a situation like this. Absolutely, and powerful, because you can tell the, the emotion you feel behind this. And just even watching some of the preview of the film, uh, you can certainly feel just all of the emotion. So. It's, this is an incredible endeavor. Um, Director Hamor, the film blends historical accounts and personal narratives. Can you describe a little more about how that's done in the film? 
Yeah, as we're we're working on putting these stories together, we discover one story that really resonated for us uh, across the hundreds and hundreds that we looked at. And it's the story of a warden's mother in the 1960s. And we know this is actually true, historically accurate. She's writing to the guys on death row, secretly without her son, the warden knowing. And uh, we know they develop really meaningful relationships. We know a number of these folks' last words or last uh, letters are actually to Warden Patterson's mother. And uh, as we discovered this, it was so impactful in the room. It really resonated with all the guys that were there. And we kept going back to this big question, which we landed on our, our goal here is how do we share humanity inside? And that's, that's for people incarcerated and that's for staff as well. And so the way that we found to share humanity was through personal stories. And so a number of the guys' personal stories are interwoven throughout the, the text that you'll hear here and throughout the stories that they're telling during the film in a really beautiful way to create a kind of composite character uh, that is sort of historically based, but is really every single one of these guys speaking directly to camera, sharing a little bit of their own story and a little bit of the hope that they get from every time a letter arrives. Which is so impactful. Um, that kind of leads into the next question with uh, Mr. Davis. One of the most touching aspects of the film is just those human connections between uh, those who are incarcerated and then their jailers. Uh, you kind of see the dilemmas that both sides face and how close is that to reality inside prison? Um, I, one of the things I think that is really happening in the Department of Corrections that was not commonplace when I was locked up is that there actually is a sense of humanity across both sides uh, and and they're not even as much sides anymore i will tell you that we spent a lot of weeks inside of territorial a lot of saturday mornings and the engagement of just line staff who were like how can we help you what can we do for you how can we make this easier yes we can figure out a way to get this to you and also watching incarcerated individuals be very appreciative of the assistance and also i'm i when I got locked up, you did not shake hands with staff. And and now shaking hands with staff is a common thing. And being treated with respect on both sides is so much more common. And just the engagement and, and the production, they, like it felt like everybody, staff and incarcerated individuals were in on one team to try to figure out a way to produce the who knows what until we saw it. Love that. It would have been, yeah, awesome to be there to see the final product. I'm sure, like you were talking about earlier, a lot of emotion. That's so neat. Um, Director Hamor, uh, there's beautiful artwork featured during the transitions in the film as well, uh, also created by incarcerated artists. So touching on the themes of humanity, redemption, one of the placards read, quote, I came to prison to be free. Uh, what do you think that individual meant by that? When we started the process, we started watching a bunch of old documentaries about territorial that were made, particularly 70s, 80s, and 90s. And every single guy who was incarcerated there uh, lacked a name in the documentary, in the, in the credits, anywhere. And the only thing that came up instead was their crime, murderer, convicted rapist, something like this. And that would be it. And so when we were thinking about how do we want to begin having this humanizing conversation, we decided to insert these placards instead uh, as the credits at the end. And everyone got to choose the sort of kernel of themselves that they wanted to be seen as from the audience. And that's what's really wonderful in film is they really get to see yourself. And so not only for these guys to hold up the sign, I came to prison to be free, but then to see themselves holding up the sign, I came to prison to be free, I think is a really powerful statement, a way that this guy is not just living his life right now, but in the way that he's seeing his future too. Uh, well, thank you all, the creators and producers of this new film, These Walls, about Colorado's oldest prison. We really appreciate your time and just uh, kind of giving us the backstory and just how powerful and important this is. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. And the premiere next Monday at the C Film Center is already sold out, but you can learn more about the project and the DU Prison Arts Initiative at cbsdenver.com.